breathed in my face, and I said, oh my gosh, Debbie, this kid is rotten on the inside. <laughs> Something's wrong. And so I, I take him down to Bruce's office, and Bruce comes in and, and gets close to him and says, oh, gosh. <laughs> Stacy, what's, what's wrong with this kid? And I said, I don't know. And he looked up at his nose, and he said, Timothy, what is in your nose? <laughs> and he said, my blanket. <laughs> he had been tearing shreds off of his baby blanket, pushing it up in his nose. And so Bruce went down to Frank Cox and got a pair of Liam Mose flyers and began to unpack that kid from his blanket vacuum. And then I think he went home that night and told Cindy, well, I have some great concerns about the intelligence of the Congress. <laughs> But Bruce, Bruce was there for us when uh, Timothy hit Caleb in the mouth with a fastball, and we held him down, and Bruce sewed up the inside of his mouth. I was there the day that Derek injured himself at our activity center, and I took him down, and we ran in the back door of the office, and uh, Bruce looked at it and said, yeah, we need to put a couple of stitches in there. He pulled out the fish hook and some thread and sewed him up without anesthesia. <laughs> And I said, Bruce, you're not going to dead. And he said, oh, that's for the paying customers. <laughs> <laughs> and so poor Derek up without anything. <laughs> One morning, Timothy's wearing his hiking boots, and I was uh, running around the house getting ready, and Timothy came up upon me before I put my shoes on with those hiking boots, and he caught my big toenail and just <laughs> raised it up. I looked down at it, and I didn't even begin. I just, I took uh, washcloth and tried to stop the blood and just drove barefoot into Bruce's office. We were nominating deacons at this time. <laughs> and he took me back to that back room and he said, now, this may sting a little bit. <laughs> and he shot that lot of cane between my toes. <laughs> I'm in a profession where you cannot say the most satisfying words. <laughs> and so I said, that is it. You are off the deacon list. You are mean and you are a liar. And he said, didn't want to be one anyway. <laughs> and he went on about his business. But, uh, You've all got those stories. Dana just had one. My stories are your stories. And it's the way Bruce has taken care of us all of these years. I've only been in town three weeks. Y'all have a lot. They didn't laugh at that. <laughs> You've all got your stories. But uh, Debbie and I will be forever grateful. And Dana's going to make me good. We'll be forever grateful for, last, for a Saturday morning last February when Bruce showed up at our house with the radiology reports that Debbie had a tumor on her pancreas. And he said, this is going to take a whole team of people to do it. And Bruce put that team of people together. And they dealt with it. And she is healthy. And we will be forever grateful. Mm -hmm. Bruce, you have saved our lives. And we'll try to help you with your soul. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about uh, what to say, and I realized that my first thought is selfish because for all these years, I, we haven't had to wonder, just as Stacy has said, we haven't had to wonder, you know, if uh, someone was there for us and whatever was going on, you know. Uh, uh, Bruce and I always like to talk. We, we talk. we talk, I enjoy our visits, I really do. He's seen me at my best and at my worst, uh, and he's seen most of us in those uh, two extremes. I uh, remember, you know, one of the things the physicians are supposed to do is no harm. And I remember some scouting incidents that, that occurred when Bruce and I were involved in the scout crew. Uh, we started out with Cub Scouts. Actually, we started out with the, the Bear Cubs. And we decided that we should teach those little guys. Aaron was one. Chris was one. And we decided we should teach them gun safety. And so I found a couple of BP guns that had a breach and had a safety, like a regular rifle. And we took them to our church fellowship hall. And I thought that I had 
Do no harm. I did not intend to harm anything. Uh, number one was, we do it, we were on the same page, we shouldn't harm a child. We probably shouldn't shoot any of them. And, and I kind of thought my idea was, and I think Bruce agreed, that maybe we shouldn't harm the, the, the building. And so I padded the doors, we padded, he bears some responsibility in this, we, we padded the doors that fold out between the fellowship hall and the sanctuary, and we thought we did a really good job to do no harm. I'm here to tell you, there are still many, 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 many park marks <laughs> in that door from that, that time when we were teaching the kids, so the, the Tiger Cubs young safety. And then uh, they got older, of course, and we went to Camp Post. I remember lots of tri trips to Camp Post, and uh, I remember some of the roads home from Camp Post, because Bruce and got to stay over Sunday, and I had to come back on Saturday night. And I, I don't remember all those roads, but I do remember the time that Bruce decided it was a good idea, and it was for us to eat um, hobo meals. And we, you're supposed to dig a ditch, a hole, you're supposed to build a fire there, you're supposed to throw, uh, you're supposed to put in foil, you know, ground meat and potatoes and an onion or that kind of carrots, that kind of stuff. And you put it in the, the hole on the coals, you bury it. And I don't know if we just didn't read how long it was supposed to stay buried, if the fire was higher than we anticipated. But I do remember vividly that we were it, in post, Bruce and I, uh, and he was buying 50 hamburgers <laughs> because those whole meals were not edible at, at, at all. Now, we have many more stories. Um, I am one of those guys, I will admit, there's two things that you shouldn't do with your doctor. First of all, when he says you should get your annual physical, how long has it been, really, since you had an annual physical? And I said, well, I go to the city hall thing every year. How long has it been since you've really had a physical? Well, it's been a while. And so I'm going to set you up for a physical. And so we've done this kind of now for a number of years. It's worked out really well. He'll say, you need to sign up for a physical. And I'll sign up for a physical. And then I'll call it cancel later. <laughs> but, but then there's, there's other stuff that works out well, too. Uh, and, and I'm just amazed at what he does. I've got stitches in a number of places. I think that they're all attributed to Bruce. He did such a good job. Uh, and there's never been a strength that I got myself into that he couldn't get me out of uh, physically. I do remember a story that involves both Cindy and Bruce. We had gone, Cindy and I served on the school board for 18 years, and she served longer than I did. You made 20, didn't you, Cindy? And uh, because Cindy was on the school board, and because she was one of the leaders of the Texas Association of School Boards on their, their board, we generally got to stay in really nice hotels. Generally did. Generally. But we got to stay in really nice hotels. One year, it just kind of didn't work out. I don't know what the deal was. And we didn't have a really nice hotel. Bruce was staying home working. And so, I know Ed and Carol Cox would love to be here today. I wish they could. But Ed decided that he could probably, there was a workaround on this, he could probably find a hotel that would be just fine. And he thought he had it. Well, you know how in cities you can go from this block and cross the alley, and you're in a block where you really should not be. Ed found a hotel on this block. <laughs> and he thought the price was really good, and he thought that, that it was really not that far from the convention center. It could work out just as well as some of those high dollar hotels. And so he signed us up, and we all agreed to that. So we went over there, and Bruce was home working. Cindy was in her room when she started getting phone calls of a very inappropriate nature. <laughs> and so she was scared, and so she called one in my room, and one answered, and we were trying to decide what to do, and so the decision was made that I should switch rooms with Cindy, and, and Cindy would sleep in Juana's room. I started to say, oh, no, Juana's room. Cindy would sleep in Juana's room. And so, that helped, one was fine with that, it helped Cindy uh, deal with the problem. And then I'm lying there in bed in Cindy's room. And I'm thinking, what am I gonna do if the phone rings and it's Bruce? And there were not cell phones, it would have been the would have been the TV room, and I would have stuttered and he would have been whatever. But anyway, uh, it worked out okay. But well, we have so many stories to tell. And Juana and I had a great time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> it was after she already gone to the room that I thought, you know, it, it occurred to me that this could become a problem a little bit. This could be awkward. Um, I'm just, for all of us, I'll say, we, again, you all have been with us through many and then through everything that life can throw at us all. And what a blessing it's been. And um, it's such a nice thing. And it suddenly, I think, you know, it's occurring to all of us what a nice thing it's been. I think we knew. But we really know now, you know, just the the knowledge that you were there for us always. And we thank you for that. No, not many people have that lesson. Thank you. My name is Bill Moore, and I used to be superintendent here when I had hair. Uh, I was not superintendent here on that trip that they were just talking about. <laughs> Stacy texted me last night and said, would you mind delivering a few words tomorrow? And I, I, I honored Bill. And he handed it to you. What? Trust me. Turn your fire on you. I mean, your microphone. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, he kind of hit it that ought to write a poem. Well, <laughs> you look over here what Jim Cage wrote, and I, if you hadn't seen it yet, you really need to. But I love poetry. My favorite poet is a guy named Ogden Nash. Some of you may be familiar with his work. He's very concise, he's very tight. He uh, gets right to the point, and that's it. So I decided to give you a poem in the style of Ogden Nash. And it's entitled, The Lonely Cedar. When my car hit that tree, you took excellent care of me. <laughs> I'm speaking probably for tens of thousands of people. I've got two quick things to say. Thank you. And we love you both. I didn't know I was going to two preachers when I took this. I think that's it. Go back to talking. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful going down the road.